hope and pray you're having a good morning. I know it's uh, <clears throat> that uh, one day of the of the year when we lose that hour of sleep, and um, we may be a little bleary-eyed. I'm looking around. I don't see anybody that showed up for the 8:30 service, thinking uh, it was 8:30, and so you're on time. <clears throat> I was uh, telling Sandy. I think I heard uh, a year or so ago that. Tomorrow, Monday, after you switch uh, to daylight saving time, uh, is one of the most dangerous times to drive on the highway. <laughs> that people are still a little sleepy, a little blurry eyed, trying to get used to that schedule. So if you have to commute tomorrow, you know, just uh, kind of remember that. But a couple of days will adjust. And the great thing is, is that <clears throat> when we spring forward, it reminds us for me anyway, I, I'm more of a spring, summer, fall guy. And, uh, you know, th there'll be some warm days mixed in now. And I think today's even one of them. So spring is coming. <clears throat> God will bring things to life again, just like he has brought us to life again in Jesus Christ. And uh, that's why we're here to worship him. And I <clears throat> just appreciate you lifting up your voices uh, this morning. Well, this morning, um, we are continuing. We just started last week. We're talking about the disciplines of the disciple. What disciplines do we need to have in our life as believers in Jesus Christ to be disciples for him and the type of disciples that he wants us to be as laid out in the New Testament? And last week, we began with the cornerstone of that, and the first discipline, we, it's a commitment of our heart and a realization of what Christ wants us to do and who he wants us to be, is that we have to make a decision of our will to make Jesus the Lord of our life. We have to put him in the center. We have to put him in the center of all we think and all we do. And we often call that uh, uh, lordship. And we have to make... Christ the Lord of everything that we do. Now, what we're going to do in the next few weeks is how do we do that? What other practical Christian disciplines do we need to allow Christ to be the Lord of our life and to grow in our faith? And so this morning, I want to talk to you about the discipline of living in the Word. Living in the Word. Now, as I think back on my own spiritual journey, I, I realized that, that I was very blessed. I know some of you, in, if you think in Christian, your Christian life, you were blessed in this way. Maybe some of you came to Christ later in life or learned the scripture later in life, but I was raised in a Christian home. Uh, my, uh, my mom and my dad uh, loved the Bible. They loved Scripture. Uh, we were at church all the time. I was one of those Baptist kids that was raised up. Uh, especially, you know, my dad, as I look back and, and really studied my family a little bit, which I encourage you to do, I think my dad came to know the Lord uh, later in life. He was probably maybe around 40 or so when he moved to the peninsula. And so he, he came to be a Christian, and a lot of folks that come to be a Christian later in life really just have this fresh energy and love for the Lord that I've seen that, uh, that some of us that have grown up in the Christian faith, we have that, but you can really see the freshness in people that accept Jesus later on. So my dad had a really love for the Bible, and by the time I was born and got to know him, really, and remember him, he... He was well-versed in the scripture, and he loved teaching me the Bible. I think I've told you before, he would read me a Bible story from a children's Bible story book, which I still have at home, every night before I went to bed. And we'd go through this, this old, I mean, you look at it now, it looks ancient, like, oh my gosh, is that all the resources we had for kids back then? But he would, uh, he'd read me these little stories that took me through the Bible, and what I remember I loved is uh, at the end of this book, it had like a quiz, and I was into that. And he would quiz me on the scripture. And um, so for some reason, um, and I, you know, I, I know the reason is the Lord, 
I just grew up loving the Bible and loving God's Word and loving the Scripture. Uh, at, at the church I went to in Newport News, um, I just had, I was blessed with very committed teachers when I was a child and when I was a teenager, up to the point that I left that church when I went to college. Uh, but I mean, thinking back, I, I can name you those teachers, many of those teachers that taught me in Sunday school classes, in vacation Bible school, in youth groups, at youth retreats. I cannot tell you one single Bible lesson they taught me. You know, I, I can't tell you an illustration. I can't tell you an outline. I can't really sometimes tell you what books they were teaching. But I remember that those men and women impressed on me that they loved God's Word. And that's what I remember. And that stayed with me till today. So I say that up front to encourage you here who are teachers or you here who are parents or grandparents and teaching your children or teaching children at church, you know, that sometimes we don't think they're listening or we wonder is frustrating at times. They are. And they may not remember. Um, I can still quote some scripture from my childhood. I don't know who taught it to me. But I remember more the people because they had a love for God's word. And so that's what I want to talk to you about today, about living in the word. And that there is a difference in reading the Bible and abiding or remaining or living the word of God. There is a difference in those two things. Have you discovered that? Now, daily Bible reading is a practice that every Christian should have. And I, and I hope you are. I hope you're carving out a little bit of time, even if it's a few verses or, or a few chapters. I'll talk to you about that in just a minute. But just reading the Bible to get through it, or reading the Bible just to check it off your Christian to-do list, that boy, if, you know, if, I, if I read the Bible, I've done my job, God's happy with me, I'm, I'm doing what the preacher said, I'm doing good here. But instead, we really, we need to learn to read Scripture with an open heart. We need to learn to read Scripture to listen as we read for the teaching of the Holy Spirit. And that's a big difference, isn't it? A big difference in just reading a wonderfully, uh, miraculously written book of letters and chapters and verses and opening our hearts to what that word of God is saying to us because that's what scripture promises us. Now, we're going to, we're going to go to a couple of different passages in scripture this morning. So the, to the importance of remaining in the word, and I use that word remain because the NIV, which most of you have, uses that in John 15. So if you look at John 15, these are words of Jesus. And I will begin reading with the fourth verse. And um, Jesus is really talking to his disciples in a very deep way. And he's, he's sharing with them what it's going to take to really draw close to him. Not only uh, now with, 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 uh, with the disciples and him on earth, but what it's going to take as he goes to heaven and he's manifested in us through the Holy Spirit. And here's what he begins to say, John 15, beginning with verse 4. Jesus says, remain in me. Some of your versions will say, abide in me. As Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you remain, if you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it'll be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. 
As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. Now one thing you can do if you study this, you know, this passage a little bit through the week, you know, is just count the number of times that I just said remain. How many times Jesus uses that word remain? Stay, abide in me. Many, many times. That's the point he's trying to get across. And so when you, when you come to your daily Bible reading, when you come to your devotional time, when you come to what I hope that you have a daily, we've often for years called it a daily quiet time, I hope you'll, you'll just approach this time you have with God and his word. Hope you'll approach it more as precious moments when you have a chance to just abide in Jesus Christ. That's amazing. We can abide in the very presence and hear the words of the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings who we sang about earlier and that his songs really touch our hearts because God is connecting with us. Uh, I, I've had many spiritual mentors as I've been on the journey of, uh, of being a, a vocational minister, which God called me into. And most of these men and women I met in my adult life, uh, one of my spiritual mentors, his name was Jay, he, he just retired from uh, who knows how long, 40 plus years of being a pastor. And um, I served under him, I was his associate for a while, but one thing I always remember about Jay is how disciplined he is in reading God's Word. Um, Jay, when he, when he has a spare moment, he he's reads all the time anyway, and he reads all kinds of books uh, as well, theological books and books about church growth, and, but he's always disciplined in reading his Bible, and he's always been that way. He had a formula. I mean, he read um, two chapters in the Old Testament, a chapter in the New Testament, and a psalm every day. That was his formula. And man, I don't think he missed many days. And he said if you do that, he'd read through the New Testament twice, the Old Testament once, and through the psalms twice in a year. And uh, just that little discipline. And he always told me, he said, you know, I just, he said, I do that because I just want to know the Bible. I just want to know God's word. And I know if I'm disciplined and stay reading it and in it and living it and abiding in it, I'm going to know and I'm going to be able to recall the word of God. And Jesus said the same thing. The more consistent we are remaining in him, and Jesus is the word, we will bear fruit for him, and he says we'll truly be his disciples in that passage I read to you. So do you truly want to have the discipline of being Jesus' disciples? Read, abide, remain through being in his word. Now, second of all, living in in the word is is to read it is to abide in it is to really pay attention and slow down to what you're reading but i think also if we're going to live in the word every day we need kind of like jay did and i've come to do is to fall in love with the scriptures are you really have you fallen in love with the scriptures and to have the eternal and loving message of God with you all the day long. Living in the word means that as you read it, as you study it, as you meditate upon it, you will, will fall deeper and deeper in love with God because that's where the Bible takes us. The more we remain in the word, the more we live the word, and the more that, that you and I will just naturally carry the joyful gospel message with us all day long. Jesus said, all people will know that you're my disciples. Because if we're living the word, you know, if it just stays with us all day, people are going to know that we love Jesus. 
or they're at least going to know that something's going on that, that's a little different and ain't going on in their life or maybe some of the other people's lives around them that don't know Jesus. And they're going to give you an opportunity to share your love of Jesus and your love of the Word. In order to do that, to live the Word versus just reading it, we have got to just gain this passion and love affair. Now listen to the psalmist. This is the 119th psalm. First of all, I encourage you to, um, to look at that psalm and spend some time in that psalm. We don't have time to do all of that psalm today. It's the longest chapter in the Bible, Psalm 119. It's many, many verses. It takes the Hebrew alphabet, and it's like an acronym. Every letter of the Hebrew alphabet, this psalmist is, is applying it to how much he loves God's word and loves the word of the Lord. But this is just a few verses of that. Psalm 119, and I'll begin with verse 9. And just listen in this as you read it with me, as I read it to you. The passion, the love that this, that this psalmist, this hymn writer, this poet has for God's word. He says, how can a young person stay on the path of purity by living according to your word? I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise me to you, Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts and consider your ways. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. That's the goal of living in the word versus just skimming over it and reading it. And that goal is that we will develop this passion for spending time in the scriptures. You know, that's what I've acquired over the years of my spiritual journey as well. I, 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 just, I just have developed this love and this passion for God's Word. I love to read it. I love to study it. I love to meditate on it. I, I discover that in my everyday life as I do those things, as I try to live out the Word, and, and that Word just just stays in my mind because, uh, you know, I, I try to be in it most of the time. That in my everyday life that, that this eternal message of God just bubbles up in all kinds of situations. And even specific verses will enter my thoughts and, and guide me in how to respond or how to make a decision or, or um, you know, how to treat other people or or, or just to go through life and make decisions. We all need to fall in love with God's word in order to be growing disciples. It's the next discipline that we just have to have. Let me give you a story I found about, about how much that a person can love God's word. Uh, it's um, a story about a man in Kansas City years ago that was injured in an explosion. And the victim's face was badly disfigured. In the explosion, he lost his eyesight and both of his hands. And he was very, just a very new Christian. And one of his greatest disappointments was that he could no longer read the Bible. Then he heard about a lady over in England who read Braille with just her lips. So he said he was going to hope to do the same. So he sent for some books of the Bible and Braille, and he started to do that. But much to his dismay, he discovered that the nerve endings in his lips had been destroyed by the explosion. So he still couldn't read God's Word. Uh, one day, as he brought some of the Braille pages to his lips, his tongue happened to touch a few of the raised characters, and he could feel them. And like a flash, he thought, I can read the Bible using my tongue. 
And at the time that this pastor told this illustration in this book, he said this man had read through the entire Bible four times using just his tongue. That's a love for the Bible. That's a love for God's Word. That's passion that comes from living the Word and seeing how valuable it is in our life. And I believe that's what Jesus is talking about in that 15th chapter of John and what he says we need to do to be his disciples. And the third thing I think Scripture talks about, about living the Word, is that living in the Word is, is always to remember the power of God. Because the Bible is powerful. It's the powerful word of God. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, and maybe if you've been in Bible study for a while, I've been going to Sunday school classes and, and studying, you, know, you, you might recognize some of this verse. But the writer of Hebrews says, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper, than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Why is reading, studying, knowing God's word so important? Because it's one of the ways that, that we are empowered in our own faith, that we gain confidence, that we gain spiritual strength, that, that we connect with the power of the Almighty because his words are within us. Look and, at, back at that, at that great verse and, and with the different things it reminds us of, of the power of God's word. It says God's word is alive and active. It's not just another book, is it? It's, just, it's not just great literature, which it is. It's not just great stories. It's not just great biography and history and great poetry. But it's alive, and it's as alive and active as the, as the moments that God inspired the writers to write it. And it's alive that you can be a part of. It's sharp, the Hebrew writer says, and and it can penetrate straight to your heart. It says the word of God has the power to change us. We don't read the Bible to change others. <laughs> you know, we, we don't think that the more we read the Bible, the harder the cover is going to be. So when you bang someone's head with it, that you can knock some more sense into them, you know. No, we, we we're trying to bang sense into our own brain to our own life, and we need to be changed. It says it serves as our conscience, and as I mentioned before, as we walk through life, the, the scriptures, the word of God, bubble up and guide us, and it molds our attitudes so that we become more like Jesus. We become Christ-like. The power of the word of God, just reading it, many, many stories. Uh, I found this one about uh, years ago, in, in the height of, of the iron, behind the Iron Curtain with, with the uh, USSR, it was in a Moscow theater, and there was a matinee, matinee idol named Alexander Rostevi. And he was converted while playing the role of Jesus in a sacrilegious play. The play was called Christ in a Tuxedo. And he was supposed to, in this play, read two verses from the Sermon on the Mount, then remove his Christ gown and cry out, Give me my tuxedo and top hat. But as he read the words, and he began to read, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. It said that he began to tremble. And instead of following the script, he kept reading aloud from Matthew 5, ignoring the coughs and calls and the foot stamping of his fellow actors who were waiting for the next line. And finally, recalling a verse he had learned way back in his childhood in a Russian Orthodox church, he cried, 
Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And it's said, as he tells his story, before the curtain could be lowered, Alexander had trusted Christ as his personal Savior. There's power in the active, living Word of God. Have you received that power? Or in your life right now, in some periods in our life, you know, maybe we're, we just discover we're back to, to reading, just reading the Bible. We think that's enough. Or, or are you living in the Word of God? Do you have a passion for Scripture? Or are you just attending worship once a week or once a month to receive your weekly dosage, your monthly dosage of God's Word? There's a difference, isn't it, in discipleship. Finally, uh, an unknown writer wrote this, which I thought was really good, about the Scripture. He said, the book is the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding, its histories are true, and its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's character. Here, paradise is restored, heaven opened, and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is its grand subject. Our good, its design, and the glory of God, its end. It should fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of pleasure. Follow its precepts, and it will lead you to Calvary, to the empty tomb, to a resurrected life in Christ. Yes, to glory itself for eternity. No wonder Jesus commands us to live, to live in his word. I hope you're finding a place to do that by yourself and with others in small groups, in classes, wherever you may find it. I'm going to pray in just a minute that God's word will just come in our hearts and give us the desire to to be more in his word. And and we'll sing a a final song and worship today. And it it may be that God's word has penetrated your heart or you realize that it's alive, that that it's real, that Jesus is real. And uh, I'll stand here just for a few minutes and then I'll sing along with you guys. Uh, But... um, you need to come up and pray. You need to come up and give your heart to Christ and say, I want to I believe in Jesus. I want to follow him very soon in baptism. I want you to do that. Today is the day. We're praying for you. Maybe it's to be a part of Fairview. You've been our guest and it's time to be a part of this body of Jesus Christ that needs you so desperately. Maybe as a believer and as a member here already, it's just to commit your heart and life. Lord, I want to live in your word. I don't want to just read it. I want to live it, and I want you to live in me. You pray that prayer, and Jesus will hear you, and he'll honor that prayer. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you are the word. May we live in you. May our life surround you. Uh, may we just love the, uh, the, the scripture that you've sent us. May we see that it's eternal, that it's, uh, that it's just always applicable, even in 2019, maybe even more. And may we take it deep in our hearts. Be with those, Lord, that are deciding to follow you as Lord and Savior.
are making and taking new steps in their journey. We worship you now with this song, and, and we praise you for meeting us here. In Jesus' name.